For today's project, I'm going to make some vases. These were designed by Steve Good, and I'll give you the link to his website and how to find these patterns in the description. The three vases are all different sizes and shapes, and I'm going to make them in three different woods. The two smaller patterns each fit completely on one page, and the largest requires two pages. For all three vases, the front and back are cut from quarter inch material with the middle cut from three quarter inch material. The flower shapes are cut only from the front panels and they will not be difficult to make. The backs are plain and the three quarter inch piece inside pieces are cut so they'll provide the hollow interior. After all the parts are cut, they're glued together, sanded and finished. Set the first one up in purple heart. There's the three quarter inch piece, that's the middle. and then the front and the back quarter inch pieces on here. I'm going to attach them to the wood and then we'll do some cutting. So I'll start with the three quarter inch thick middle piece. Notice I took the tension off the blade when I stopped cutting my last project, so I just had to flip the tension lever back up to get started. Out of habit, I plucked the blade to check tension and it sounded good, so I was ready to proceed. Purple Heart is a dense hardwood, so a number 9 blade was a good choice. When choosing a blade size, I take into account the thickness and hardness of the wood, as well as the complexity of the pattern. In case you're new to scroll sawing and would like to learn more about choosing the correct size scroll saw blade for each project, I'll leave a link to my video on that subject on the screen and in the description. Because Purple Heart is such a hard wood, cutting will be slow even with a number 9 blade. You may be tempted to push the blade harder to speed things up, but that is not a good practice. Placing extra pressure on the blade can cause it to flex, and you won't get a straight 90 degree cut. The other possibility is that you can cause the blade to overheat, and that in turn could cause the wood to burn or the blade to break. Be patient and let the blade do the work. I made the inside cut first, as usual, but rather than continuing on across the top and having to make two 90 degree turns, I made the first turn and then cut past to the top of the workpiece. This way I could start at the edge, making a cut straight down, then started the curve for the top of the vase in one direction, then another. I cut the back next, trimming off the top and bottom first, then the sides. You can get a better feel for what the finished vase is going to look like as I place the back against the middle. The cutout from the middle section is what creates the interior portion of the vase. I usually make all the interior cuts first on pieces that have them, but that wasn't necessary on this piece because those few small interior cuts weren't going to greatly weaken the workpiece. I had already drilled the pilot holes for the interior cuts, so on the leaf shape I cut from the pilot hole to a corner, then backed up to the pilot hole and made a cut down to the other side of the leaf to that same point. This is an easy way to make sure you have a nice sharp points where they're needed. I used the same technique on the other side of the leaf. The other shapes were such that I could cut from the pilot hole to an edge, then simply follow the cut line all the way around. There were four of the shapes centered around a circle. Partway through cutting the second shape, I made a small goof. Evidently, I hadn't tightened the thumb screw on the lower blade holder enough, and the blade slipped out. This caused the blade to be bent, and I had to throw it away and replace it. I grabbed a new blade from the holder I kept next to the scroll saw and installed it. This, by the way, is a number 5 Pegas modified geometry blade, since I'm cutting quarter-inch material. Switching blades off. on the Pegas scroll saw is easy and fast, and as you can see here. I made the last the few old. interior cuts, then I pulled the pattern from the workpiece, showing why I like to use scroll saw tape. It holds firmly while you're cutting, but Little. peels off quickly when you're done. I'll leave a link to my source in the description. Front. This time I lined up all three pieces and to give back. a preview of what the vase will look like once the pieces and are glued together. That. Making a first vase went rather quickly, so I decided to continue on with the other two vases. Since they each required quarter inch stock, I started by looking through my boxes with quarter inch thick pieces, and I found suitable parts in sapele and red oak. I have three-quarter material available in each of these as well. I drilled the pilot holes at my drill press, then came back to the scroll saw where I had the number five Pegas modified geometry blade left from cutting the quarter-inch pieces from the previous face. I decided to cut the outside of the top piece first. 
I started cutting at the bottom and followed the curve up to the top. I cut right to the edge, backed off slightly on the blade, and used the kerf that had just been created to swivel the workpiece 90 degrees. Rather than cut just that short distance before having to make another 90 degree turn, I just kept on cutting straight up to the edge of the workpiece. Now I was able to turn the workpiece 90 degrees before starting to make the cut across the top of the vase. When you're near the edge of a workpiece, you can use this technique to make those sharp turns. When I got to the other end of the top, it wasn't practical to make the turn in this matter because I was heading into the center of the board rather than toward a corner. So this time I cut to the corner, backed off slightly, then made the swivel, cut just a short distance, then made another 90 degree turn. This is probably harder to describe than to actually do once you have some practice. In my experience, a lot of scroll saw patterns will require 90 degree or other sharp turns. So before long, you'll become adept at making these moves. I moved on to the interior cuts next. Compared to some of the patterns I've cut, these are not very small or complex, and I think a beginner on the scroll saw should be able to handle these without too much difficulty. I use, the, I use a lighted magnifier most of the time, but I found that when I'm recording video of my work, the light has a tendency to make the video too bright, so I'm going to turn off the light before I proceed. I had already drilled the biot holes, so I picked a spot to start cutting. It doesn't matter what order you cut these in. I followed the same technique as I did for the purple heart base, cutting from the pilot hole to a corner, then backing up to the pilot hole and cutting down the opposite side to leave a sharp corner. One place I could have worked smarter on these would have been to use a larger drill bit to make the center hole for the flower. I used the same bit for the pilot holes, so I had to cut the circle with the scroll saw. It would have been more efficient to choose a drill bit large enough to drill the center hole rather than to cut it out. Once I made all the cuts, I pulled off the pattern. You can see why I like using scroll saw tape to attach patterns to wood. The tape holds well while I'm cutting, but it peels off easily and leaves no residue when I'm done. I'll leave a link to my supplier in the description. I completed the quarter inch pieces, so now it's time to cut the three quarter inch sections, and I need to switch to a number nine Pegasus modified geometry blade. It's hard to tell which side is up and which is down because these are reverse tooth blades with teeth facing in both directions. The trick that works for me is to hold the blade in one hand, then run it gently against my thumb on the other hand. Moving it in one direction will catch the skin much greater than the other, and that's the direction you want to mount facing downwards because you want the blade to do most of the cutting on the downstrokes. Cutting the three-quarter oak and sepale parts is just like cutting the purple heart face, except that these two woods are not as dense. Still, at three-quarters thick, they will take a little bit of time and effort to cut. Just remind yourself to cut slowly and let the blade do the work. Once I made the inside and outside cuts, I lined the three pieces up to see what the completed vase was going to look like. If you cut carefully, these pieces should line up nicely for the glue-up, otherwise you'll have to do a lot of sanding. So far, I've never run across a woodworker that said, oh no, I don't mind sanding at all. In fact, it's my favorite part of woodworking. I set the back of the purple heart face down on my workbench and set the middle section on top of it to see how they lined up. The outlines look good, so I picked up a bottle of glue to start the glue up step. I like white glue because it dries clear. I buy it in gallon bottles, then use the large bottle to refill small and medium sized bottles. The small bottle has a tiny tip that works perfectly for small areas like the edges of the vase. I use the tip to apply a small bead of glue, then on small areas like this, I use my fingertip to spread the glue. For larger areas, I use a brush. Since this is a water-based glue, it's easy to clean up afterwards using just soap and water. Once I was happy with the way the bottom piece was situated, I added glue to the top of the middle layer, spread it around, then added the top layer with the cutouts. I stood the assembly up on its bottom to make sure the pieces were aligned there, and I checked the sides to make sure they aligned properly with the top. I want all the pieces lined up as perfectly as possible before I add clamping pressure. I could have used several F clamps, but the vise on the edge of my workbench does a great job of applying even clamping pressure across the bottom half of the vase. I added an F clamp to the top to secure it. The process was the same for the second and third bases, except that I used the second vise on the other side of the workbench to secure them. I let them all dry, probably overnight, because it's getting late. 
Well, there we have the three vases from left to right, uh, the smallest, medium, and the large. Uh, the left one is Purple Heart, the middle one is Sepele, the right one is Oak. And not difficult cuts at all on any of them. A beginner could do these. This will give you an idea as to size if I begin it up in my hand there. I gave the vases a spray polyurethane finish. You could make these different sizes if you wished. If you have access to a copier that will enlarge, you could make these larger. This was a fun project, and I'm sure I'll make more of these. Let me know what you think. Are these something you would like to make? They make nice little bud vases. Leave your comments below as I reply to every comment. Please hit the notification bell and subscribe if you've not already done so. That helps you by being notified every time I release a new video, and it helps me by YouTube promoting my video to more potential viewers. A suggestion for the next video to watch will be on the screen now. I'll see you there.